Warning, this show may cause you to play more. The consequences of this can include enjoying work, looking forward to coming home, dealing effectively with challenges, and being happy. Welcome to Play DHD, the premier resource for expert information, conversation, and content focused on play and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder with psychologist and ADHD coach, Dr. Kirsten Milliken and author Stacy Turris. Welcome to Play DHD. So hi, this is Dr. Kirsten Milliken and I'm here with my co-host Stacy Turris. Hi Stacy. Hi Kirsten, how are you? I'm doing well again. This is take 2 for us. So, we We're like, I'm like, didn't we already say good morning? We did. It's it's mid morning now. Good 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 brunch or something. We started we in the early morning. <laughs> now it's mid morning. Oh my goodness. So I just want to mention again, although it's not, it doesn't flow as well the second time. Um, we are interviewing today Peter Freer from Play Attention. And one of the reasons that I've been really fascinated uh, about talking with him, and we've been very persistent today about getting him on, um, is I stumbled across some of the NASA technology that we're going to talk about in a little while that has to do with um, helping people to focus and pay attention. And also I have an upcoming talk with Randy Coleman um, of Learning Works for Kids, and that's going to be at the ATA conference in Detroit. Uh, July 18th through the 21st, and we're actually going to be talking about uh, building executive skills through play. And that conference, you know, I go to a lot of professional conferences, but this one's actually for adults with ADHD. So um, they've got some phenomenal people talking, and I was so excited I got put in the same sentence as Rick Green from the from the Red Green Show, and now he's got totally ADD, his uh, site and his videos and all that. So I was like, "Woo! I've really made the big time now. I'm up there with Rick Green." So <laughs> very excited about that. Daisy, what are you up to? Tell me again. <laughs> oh, again, I'm just dealing with the end of school stuff and writing for attitude online yep yep and, and te it. tell us remind us again you're writing under what name for the attitude magazine adhd superhero so it's Yeehaw. a it's one of the adult blogs but yeah there's just a lot it's actually um it's it's going really great i mean there's they're sharing a lot of the articles and so it's just on like you know adult stuff changing our perception um calming our environment um working through overwhelm um ways to you know calm our bodies i mean it's uh, just you said that you were going to be doing one on planning for the summer as well that's yes one that's coming the up, one right? i have to write um this weekend is just you know how to structure ourselves so that we don't just like fly away to space over the summer the so kids important, especially for adults and kids so yeah for both i mean both both the kids and I need a lot of structure. And so in the summertime, it's kind of like we slowly start to fall apart. <laughs> and then by the end of summer, I'm insane. <laughs> That's not they've, good. <laughs> they've run away. <laughs> and you don't notice. <laughs> I don't notice. It, it, school starting the next day, I round everybody up and go, okay, get your shit together, everyone. We got to go through school year again. <laughs> hilarious. Well, let's let Peter come on the show and have some fun with us. Um, I want to, I want to introduce him. I was, I was organized with his bio in front of me a few moments ago and now um, <laughs> I've since, oh wait a second, here it is. There it is. So um, Peter is actually a former school teacher and he founded Play Attention because he was noticing that a lot of kids had a hard time um, with focus and concentration. Um, and he saw some of the stuff that was happening at NASA where they were using feedback-based technology or video games, what I think of as video games, uh, to improve astronaut performance uh, on flight simulator training. Um, so apparently he also had training from the National Science Foundation in educational computer programming, and he developed this play attention um, based on some of NASA's technology. And so... I'm really excited about this, Peter. Welcome again Thank to you. Play DHD. Again. Yay! 
So let's go with the first question. And now you're going to hear my question and we're going to hear your answer. My first question was, I want to know, I want you to tell us more about the products of play, the, of, um, play attention, what you guys are offering to your customers. Well, yeah, let's talk a little bit about the technology behind it because I think you'll find yeah. that fascinating. The, um, it is feedback-based technology. So what we've done over the last few years is developed a body sensor system. So you put on this little armband that looks like an MP3 holder, an iPod holder, yep. and it actually monitors your brain data in real time. So it actually can see how much attention you're paying, how much you're thinking about what you're doing. Oh my and gosh, I need one history. of those. Sorry, I just need one of those to walk around with at all times of the day. It. Yes. We have them. <laughs> all right, good. The, it's the first time in history we've been able to do it through the body because, you know, we have, for years, people have worn these kind of silly gadgets on their head. You know, and I was just at the uh, Consumer Electronics Show and uh, in Las Vegas just a short while ago. 150,000 of the world's geekiest people are there. I mean, if there's technology, <laughs> cool. it's there, right? So there's not one person walking around with something silly on their head. They're not wearing a headset. It's been a big problem because adults don't want to be seen with this on. Children don't want to be seen because it makes us feel strange or, or uh, stranger. Sure. stranger. So we developed it so it could be worn on the body and we could still monitor what your brain is doing in real time. So with that as the basis, it allows us by wearing that, it allows us to control the computer by mind alone. Right? So when I'm paying attention, I can actually control a screen character in front of me. So my attention becomes concrete and controllable. My mind essentially is the mouse or joystick. And with that capability, the door is wide open, right? Because it's empowering. For me, finally, uh, as an educator, I was allowed to teach attention skills as if they were a real skill, just like mathematics, uh, yeah. like science. I could actually teach this instead of saying, hey, you know what? You have a mental illness because that's the way the, the industrial complex looks at it right now, right. right? They're broken. They're damaged. They're mentally ill, which is one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard in my life. We are they're magical, damn it. We're magical. They're, yeah. Well, and really, isn't that based, though, Peter? Uh, I mean, this is what I say to people, which is, you know, it's it's attention deficit disorder, even though we all know that there's – the overfocus, the you know attention abundance part of it too, but it was kind of named because it showed up when the adults thought it was an inconvenience when kids were not interested, so they were in deficit at that time. I, right. Well, you know that's a misnomer in itself. That name is an entirely wrong name. Right. I mean, one of the things I found out immediately when I was teaching, even in my second year, you know, with a graduate degree, second year, I had no resources. I had no idea how to accommodate the needs of these students, adults or children. But one of the first things I did notice is, I, and I would go over and interview them about an hour into my class, and we'd be taking a break, and then discreetly I'd say, what do you know about class this morning? Now the answers to that were remarkable because they could tell me a little bit about what that bird was doing out on the limb of a tree sitting outside the window. They could tell me a little bit about the dust ball in the corner of my room. They could tell me a little bit about my lesson. They could tell me a little bit about what that person was whispering next to them, a little bit about those people outside the doorway, and then they could tell me a little bit about when the air conditioner was turning on and off. So there's no deficit here at all. No, they have no. A, an incredible amount of attention, but the part of their brain, especially the frontal cortex, we think, the part of their brain that allows them to sustain and direct attention is not functioning as highly as it should. So is that a mental health issue? No. Can they be taught to do that to be able to harness their attention, control it, sustain it, direct it at will? And the answer is yes. As a matter of fact, that's not just me babbling. The Tufts Medical School did a controlled randomized study on play attention. And we came out with incredibly good scores. As a matter of fact, it was published in the journal Clinical Pediatrics. Cool. And it precipitated, it prompted, a huge follow-up over the next two years in 19 different schools in the Boston area. And those data came out even better than the initial data, and they'll be published in another peer-reviewed clinical journal shortly. So what we're talking about here is, is a different perspective entirely. We're not talking about damaged human beings. We're talking about just taking cognitive skill sets, 
and giving us something concrete right in front of us, a training tool that will allow us to play and to learn these new skills uh, without you know, any kind of stigma attached. And then we can function at our optimum. Right? Does, now, does, does that make sense? Yeah. How oh, so? Oh, go, sorry, Kirsten. No, Stacy, go ahead. You're I going. was just wondering. So, walk us through kind of if someone's interested in doing this, what is the process they go through? Do they come in for weekly visits? And if so, for how long? Do you offer it online? You do it at home. You can go to one of our centers and uh, you can check the website by playattention.com. Playattention.com to see if there's a center in your area or contact one of our staff at the 800 number or chat with them and they'll tell you if there's a center near it. But you can do it at home. I mean, it's very, very simple because all you get to do is turn the game on, all right? turn the system on because Play Attention is an incredible system that covers many different cognitive areas, right? There's visual tracking so I can watch my employer move about the office in a staff meeting or I can watch the teacher as she's moving about the room uh, during a lesson. There's auditory processing so I can learn to take multiple step directions. There's working memory, short-term memory, spatial memory activities in there. There's sustaining and directing attention, hand-eye coordination, motor skills, auditory, well, I said auditory processing, social skills as well so I can learn to make friends and keep friends. So what we've tried to do is address as many of these skill sets as we possibly can because these are what really uh, seem to cause us the most problems when we have attention problems. So There's Peter, attention so, problems on the surface. Oh, Kirsten, we lost your audio. We lost your audio. Oh, Kirsten, no audio. We can't hear you. <laughs> Look at her face. Okay, you're back. No, you're not. Can't hear you. <laughs> okay, Peter, we'll let her get her audio figured out. Okay, so can you you can hear me still, right? I can still hear you. Yeah. Okay. So they actually do this from home. So do they go um to the facility and check out the equipment? No, they actually we sell the equipment to them, but one of the great things, and the reason that we, and we do this globally, we are probably the largest in the world that, that do this. We've been around since 1994, been doing this for a long time. So you can actually purchase the equipment and the, the entire course, and then we train you how to do it. You get a master's degree psychologist, uh, educator, or social worker who becomes your personal advisor. It's included for free in the program, and then they stay on the phone with you for about an hour, hour and a half, whatever it takes. And they hold your hand and they teach you how to use all of this okay. and get trained really quickly. Then, for free, you can also send in your data and we will analyze it to give you new strategies. So that's why we have an incredibly high success rate. So what we're doing is giving them skill sets or teaching skill sets that they need and then improving their cognitive ability through this, the entire training process. Now, how long do are they expected to um, do the program? Or what's the average? I know everybody's probably different, but. That's right. We learn at different rates. But, you know, commonly we ask that you do it at least an hour per week. Okay. You can do it more. And then when you, your professional will actually help tailor that so it's customized to your needs as, as far as the schedule is concerned. Because in the summer, as you said, everything gets crazy. But right. we try to help you set the schedule so that it really works for you, your family, your professional practice. And then additionally, since everyone learns at a different rate, we find that it usually takes between half of a year and then three quarters of a year so that the skill sets are actually generalizing to the workplace or, their, um, or the classroom. And then we begin to wean you off of it. Since you know what to do and how to do it, your brain has changed, then we start to wean you off of it so then you don't have to do it the rest of your life. You basically have the skill sets and then you can move on. It's, it's kind of like your multiplication tables. Right. Like you, you learned those years ago, right, 10, 20, 30, 40 years right. ago. But no one stole them from you. You may get a little rusty, but right now you, you still know what 2 times 2 is. You know what 3 times 3 is, right? You had to study those long enough, though, so that they were yours full time. 
you right. know, for the rest of your life. Right. And that's what we're doing. Same type of thing. It just means that we're not broken. We're not damaged. And we do have the capacity to make significant change. So is there ever any concern about this is uh, this is coming from an ADD or this is always a concern when it talks about changing the structure of our brain or changing you know the memory of our brain or whatever is there ever any concern with um, worrying that we'll lose part of the our special part of our ADHD by by kind of gaining gaining those skills well that's a really good question no you know there is no uh, loss of any special part because we're not changing your personality we're not changing your uh, your traits of in ingenuity or insight right what we are changing is your inability to perform certain cognitive skills right or having a lessened ability to perform those skills so let's say we actually have a program let me just use this as an example we have a program in there a, a game that you can play that teaches you a skill called time on task, being able to start a task right away and then stay with it and close it. And so what we're doing is giving you a skill that allows you to finish a project. Because in um, for an adult, right, if I have an attention issue, I commonly will start 20 uh, projects and then finish none of them. Right. And right? as a child, I'll bring home a 15-minute homework assignment, but it'll take two hours in a fight with mom or dad absolutely before I finish it so it's not changing the fact that they're insightful or intelligent as a matter of fact it oftentimes increases their IQ scores so it's not inhibiting any of that it's just okay. giving them bolstering them in those little skill areas that they really need to improve to function well and and live happily I mean that's right the final, you know the final goal here is that we function well right and we're happy and not scattered Look, do you see Kirsten? <laughs> oh, we can hear you. I can, can you hear, hear you me Kirsten. now? Woo! It's like You're a miracle. Back. <laughs> oh, and I thought it was just my technology failing today. Oh, my <laughs> God. It was Google. It wasn't me. It was Google. <laughs> totally. Oh, my God. Uh, Could you hear like, us? I could hear you the whole time, oh, yeah, okay. but I was like, <laughs> so I was making faces trying to see if you could hear me. <laughs> oh, that is Peter. awesome. Oh, my God. So we do need to go to a break for a moment. <laughs> for our sponsor. This is what it's, this is, this is our show, Peter, right here. Like, you, all the other talk shows you've been on, no. This is the show. This, this is, the is perfect, how we really this roll. This is the perfect show for play attention, though, right? Because so, we're playing. And, you know, I've been on Good Morning America a couple of times. <laughs> Not nearly as fun as this, right? You're nowhere near um, the 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 uh, the complexity, but I'm having a lot more fun. <laughs> Yay! We went over Matt Lauer. Yeah, that's all that matters in our book. You gave us the highest compliment possible. Absolutely. All right, so let's go to our sponsor spot, ADD Crusher. Do you wish learning could feel more like I don't know playing? Well, ADD Crusher videos are guaranteed to help you create mental focus, get and stay motivated, manage time and more. And these videos are a blast to watch and learn from. They're like veggies for your brain, but candy for your eyes and ears. They're like having your own personal ADHD coach who's brilliant but crazy. And right now you can get 20% off ADD Crusher videos by using promo code PlayDHD20 at addcrusher.com. And we're back. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Go. Yes, we are. We're back. We're back. Yeah. We're back. Great. And we're not going to have any more technical difficulties. NASA apparently has not caught up with us this time. No. Nope. So we're all just going to stay on the line and keep on talking. So <laughs> thank you for being patient. Uh, you know, you know about tech tech. Oh my gosh. Now I just having, lost the word. Her is having technical difficulties. Technical. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Peter, tell me, you know, maybe you guys were talking about this. I was so focused on trying to get myself back online here with the audio. But the concept of play, I mean, you know, you said that Tufts did this research and found that play attention certainly did have a significant impact. 
And, you know, I'm sitting here going, of course it did. You're talking about playing to improve attention. And that's what play ADHD is all about. That's what, that's why we exist. So tell me about playing. How do you focus on that? Not just in your business, but in general. In general, what we know, especially about learning, I'd like to discuss play and its association with learning. Yes. Because to me, the two are not separate. You know, they're, they are one and the same. When we are in having a play state or a play state of mind, we are incredibly open and not worried about outside influence, about test scores or what whether I'm going to succeed or not. I'm enjoying the moment. I'm in the moment. I'm actively engaged. And there is meaning to me at this point, right? This is huge. The fact that there is meaning in the play that I'm doing. And whether I know it or not, Right. There's meaning in, in the play that I'm doing. So whether it's uh, playing in a sandbox or I'm playing tennis or whatever, there is meaning associated with it to me personally. And that is, I think, one of the biggest problems we're, we're losing in education today. Um, we are not uh, ma giving meaning to any of the play that they're doing. And it's not even play anymore. It's drudgery. Unfortunately, public ed in this country is is uh, going to hell in a handbasket. Mm -hmm. The... Uh, there's no longer, you know, the real teaching and, and play and understanding and discovery. What we're doing is giving them a curriculum that they're going to be tested on, obviously, and then we're going to teach them that curriculum and test them on it. And, of course, they're going to uh, uh, perform uh, in a rote kind of fashion. We're not teaching them to think. So it's, it's dreadfully wrong, so, but that's a, I'm digressing. What, I'm, what we look for when we use play attention is the fact that we can play and give meaning to what they're doing, right? We're playing for a reason. So when we play a game and play attention, we're playing to learn a cognitive skill that I don't have. I'm playing to learn to increase or sustain and direct my attention. I'm playing so that I can learn to do my homework on my own. Or I'm playing so that I can learn to remember where I leave things, like my checkbook or my backpack or my homework. And I when we develop these, and this is something I lectured on at the United Nations, when we do these things, there are three critical catalysts that spark long-term change. Neuroplasticity, especially uh, if you haven't read about this before, you ought to uh, look into something called CREB, the cyclic yes. amp response elements binding proteins, because this is where actual um, rewiring occurs. This is how it occurs in the brain. But what's the catalysts that actually spark that change consists of three they consist of three primary elements one is attention I have to have enough of your attention enough of your active play engagement with me so that the brain gets hold of this information and starts to say I need to make changes to adjust to this incoming information now with that though there has to be a degree of challenge because if we're not challenged then it just elicits memory, right? All right, I already know that. I, right, I doesn't have it have to be, it has to be, though, um, consistent with what the player's ability is. That's important, am I right? Absolutely. It has to challenge that, that person, that individual, just enough so that they're, they're having to increase their ability to perform, yet they're not allowed to fail. Now, a secret behind what we do, and I'll let you in a little bit of the technical information here, is that we have a challenge algorithm built into the feedback that they get. So when they're using play attention, it will allow them to pay attention to their best capacity, and when they're there for a little while, then play attention has a little artificial intelligence built into it. It says, can you pay attention just a little bit more for me? And then it raises the bar. If they reach that level of attention, then it allows them to stay there, and it will challenge them again. And it will do this until they reach a point of failure. At the point of failure, it immediately pushes them back to their last, most successful state. So I'm constantly challenging the individual that's playing, but I'm not allowing them to fail. So they're, they're absolutely engaged as much as they possibly can be, and they're given challenge all the way through. And then if there is any point where they can't achieve it, then we push them back to their last successful state. So we're constantly at, at the leading edge for them as far as their learning capacity is concerned. And then we give them what's called, to top this all off, the third catalyst. So we've got attention, 
challenge. And then the third major catalyst is actually deliberate practice. Not just practice, but deliberate practice. Mm -hmm. That we're having fun every time we do this. We're playing, but we're having fun. Fun. We're doing it for a reason, right? We know what our goal is, and we're constantly getting this little bit of feedback loop on our goal, whether we're reaching the goal or not. But all the time in there, we're setting these little mini goals for them. We use a, a character called Sheer Genius. He's kind of an Einstein. I've seen character. him. <laughs> and Sheer Genius sets these little mini goals for them, saying, hey, you know, you accomplished this much last time. Let's set a little mini goal and see if you can accomplish just a fraction more this time. So there is this constant state of practice with feedback being given, but also with a little bit as we move, move into each program, there's also a little bit of that deliberate practice model in there. And deliberate practice is far different. Or is you think your audience is already familiar with this concept of deliberate practice as opposed to just practice? There's a huge difference between the two. Well, so, I, I think but our audience knows that we need to be doing deliberate practice. Whether or not that happens, I mean, do you want to explain the con do you want to explain the concept? Yeah, deliberate practice was coined by a professor at a University of Central Florida. I think his name was Anders Ericsson. He wrote a tome on this, and it's, it's beautiful, beautiful work. It's how we become experts. And uh, one of the secrets they, that we find about deliberate practice, and practice in general, let's say that we are a golfer. I don't play golf, but I've watched people practice. They take a bucket of balls, they go out to the golf course, they put the ball down, and they hit it. And they, come, they, and they go through the whole bucket, hitting a, try, practicing their drive, right? And they come back and they go, man, my game just hasn't improved. I hit that whole bucket of balls. My game doesn't improve. I don't know why, you know? And a lot of guys I've seen will do the same thing, men and women. They'll go to the tennis court and uh, they'll, you know, practice their serve again and again and again. They go, my serve just isn't improving. I don't know why. Well, it's because they're not practicing deliberately. They're not practicing tweaking, deliberate. tweaking as they go. They're not constantly tweaking to improve whatever's off. They're just hitting the same exactly. motion but every time. In order to tweak, there has to be a feedback loop. In other words, I can't tweak unless I understand what is causing me not to get the ball in. Right. Right. I have to have that information back immediately. And oftentimes, as a person practicing, I don't know how to get that information. So, this is why play attention is so valuable because we give you the immediate feedback on your attention and your challenge level the entire time you're engaged with it. There's that's why it's so effective. So, but Peter, for was the be, average person, they don't have that capacity to do that. Right. Right. Peter, would this be similar to, say, just playing any old video game, um, just to play it, versus playing it with the awareness and intention? of practicing a particular skill. That is a huge difference, but of course implied in that is that we have to have a game that has that particular goal for a particular skill, right? right? If I need to improve my sp spatial memory so I can remember in 3D where I leave my uh, my checkbook or my car keys or my homework oh, as a child. My car keys are missing as we speak for three days, so. <laughs> there you go. You're, you're one of the primary candidates. <laughs> so in order to learn that, I have to understand that's something I need to improve. Let's go after it. In general, though, video game play, the especially commercial off-the-shelf video games, it's been a, uh, an abundance of research on this. Those games actually teach shortened attention. Because they don't allow, you know, it's very quick response, point and click, and the the child, usually the child to mid adult, um, you wouldn't believe, but the you know there's billions of dollars spent on this, uh, but primarily from young male adults. That is their huge market. Children often play, you know, children right now. The American uh, Academy of Pedi Pediatrics says that the average child is getting seven hours of screen time per day. Oh, Wait, not surprised. Way Are too you much. not surprised? Way too much. Can, can we? But can they're we... playing a lot of these video games, and that's why obesity is up in this country as well. They'll point and click, and and their brain is responding in milliseconds to these to the stimuli on screen. So anything slower than that, if it's the teacher's lesson, 
my skating lesson, you know, playing football, soccer, whatever I'm doing. If it's slower than that, then it gives me, it's much harder for me to direct and sustain my attention because I'm, my brain is now accustomed to moving at an incredibly high pace. Yeah. Now, so everything else on, so sorry. Peter, can I have, can I have you pause for a moment? Cause we need to go to another um, advertiser spot real quickly. Sure. And when we come back, we'll talk more about that because that's definitely something that Stacy and I have talked about and pay attention to. So one more time, another advertiser spot, and we will be right back. Do you wish learning could feel more like, I don't know, playing? Well, ADD Crusher videos are guaranteed to help you create mental focus, get and stay motivated, manage time and more. And these videos are a blast to watch and learn from. They're like veggies for your brain, but candy for your eyes and ears. They're like having your own personal ADHD coach who's brilliant but crazy. And right now, you can get 20% off ADD Crusher videos by using promo code PLAYDHD20 at addcrusher.com. So we're back with Peter Freer from Play Attention. And we were just talking about um, what I always say, which is, you know, we're tr our kids are training their brains to go at a really fast pace. And so everyday life seems kind of boring. So boring. Anything that so, doesn't move like that so is boring. boring. Um, right. And so, Peter, tell us more about where you were going with that. Well, I think it's important to understand that high stimulation, off-the-shelf commercial video should be treated like uh, dessert. You wouldn't allow your child to sit and eat dessert for two hours, three hours, four hours at a time, right? If we look at it as, as something that is, is fun and it's delicious, but I don't need to eat it for three hours at a time. I need to consume it, and that's what they're doing. They're consuming these activities, right, it, whether it's Xbox or PlayStation. We need to do it in a limited capacity, a controlled limited capacity that parents need to take responsibility for. They need to know the content of what their child is playing because if the child is playing incredibly violent content and they have and this is what research has shown if they have violent propensities in their in their genetic makeup all right then it tends to exacerbate that they become a little bit more violent if they're not violent then it tends to not have a big effect at all but if they are if they have semi you know violent uh, um, propensities then it can become problematic as, as well as making their brain more of an instrument that is only able to pay attention in brief flashes. Mm -hmm. now, our capacities as a, a society, by the way, have also diminished uh, as well as, as uh, being able to uh, pay attention. Because if you go back to the days of the, the Lincoln-Douglas debates, in those days, the average person, right now, let, let's do a comparison. The average person who reads the Sunday edition of the New York Times, right, in that one newspaper is more than a person in, during the days of the Lincoln-Douglas debates got in her lifetime. Wow. Okay, so we have had a gradual increase in the amount of information mm -hmm. we consume. We're exposed to on a, on a daily, hourly, minute-by-minute -minute basis now, especially if we're seven hours on screen all day long. So there's a huge change in the way that our brains were structured. In those days though, in the Lincoln Douglas debate time, right, they could sit and listen to two men debate for hours at a time. And then they'd go home, have dinner, and discuss it over dinner. Now we don't have the capacity any longer, if you sit in a movie theater and you watch something like uh, the newest Star Trek that's out. Great picture, incredible computer graphics, high, high intensity. But I have people that I watched moving in and out of the theater all the time. Some were had their phones out. We can't even pay attention to something that's overwhelmingly stimulating now. Right. Yeah. We are so diminished in our capacity right. to pay attention as a society. And, of course, it's trickling down to, to children. And, of course, since it's inconvenient, I think, as we mentioned previously, we say they have a problem. Yeah. Well, they do. Well, and those children problem. are becoming adults. And then those adults, yeah. I mean, they. I know that you're probably aware there was a – a report that came out, I think it was even last summer, about how many young men, and, and I know you had mentioned something about this earlier, but how many young men, like in their 20s, are not going to college, they're not going into jobs, they're really just 
sitting at home and playing video games. This has become, you know, they've become unfunctional. Um, because, go ahead. It's a national trend. It is. Yep. And we've provided, you know, we've, this is what we want, though. I mean, if, if we are marketing people, right, this is what yep. I want. I want that consumer who is never going to leave that PlayStation. I want them to eat the chips, drink the drinks, eat the ice cream while they're playing. And I don't want them to leave because this is the ultimate product we've asked for. So it's one of those things where we must be aware of what we've, we've asked for because this is what uh, the, uh, the gaming industry has, uh, has wanted for years. Yeah. This is what we want. We want that never-ending consumer because it brings more money in. Uh, I'm, I'm certain that's not what they anticipated. So they, they didn't probably anticipate. didn't anticipate these kids dying from deep vein thrombosis either from playing That's the video games. So can, major, can you just talk? We've you got know, like one. We've got. Yeah, yes. we've got one minute left. What I'd really like to hear about is um, if you've got any cases that you can talk about for maybe one or two minutes. Um, adults. <laughs> one of the things that we focus on a lot is you know we've got a lot of adults with ADHD um, and just general attention problems who I'm sure would benefit from play attention. And in part because work gets boring a lot of times and you know that the rate um, among people with ADHD for getting fired or leaving jobs is pretty high compared to the general public. Um, can you talk a little bit for just like another minute or two about how your product or just in general your thoughts about what they need to do to, to improve there? We had a student named Will and uh, Will incredibly intelligent person but he flunked out of university he watched his friends move on his father was a prominent surgeon here in town and uh, one of our trainers went to him and his father uh, had asked one of our trainers to meet with him and uh, Will had even taken courses at the community college and just couldn't pay enough attention and failed those courses carpentry courses just to get himself back in education so we worked with Will and uh, Will actually got back into the educational flow. He graduated, he has a master's, and he now works with autistic children, wow. uh, understanding what their needs are, because he was along that spectrum. He, he knew that he had some cognitive issues that prevented him from being successful, but he overcame them. That's how, how powerful, how empowering this, this is, the, the ability to, to literally rewire oneself. Yeah. And that's one of those great things about having a human brain is that we do have the capacity to do that. And we have a, the capacity, especially when it's easy for us now, since we have this tangible device that allows us to actively engage and see our attention in real time, we're incredibly empowered by this, rather than uh, just guessing our way through it, like most people do all of their lives, right. uh, trying this or that. We actually have a, the tools to, to make these changes significantly in in a relatively short period of time. Amazing. Before Amazing. we go, tell us exactly the equipment that you buy. Tell us what well, you get with this and, and kind of tell us about and then your website. It's pretty simple. You can go to playattention, P-L-A-Y attention dot com and you'll see there's a little armband device. That's the only device you need. It takes two AA batteries and then it works with our software, the whole system. But remember, it's, it's uh, cognitive skills, training, behavior, shaping, the feedback technology. And the great thing about it is that you're supervised by a professional, master's degree, educator, psychologist, social worker, the entire time for free. They become your partner to help you make these changes so that you're not alone. You know, a lot of us feel that we cannot do it alone. And it's true. We've tried. Right? Stacey and I like, were actually wait. talking about the importance of making sure that yeah. you have a partner because if it's just up to, I know if I always say if it's just up to me and it's written down on my calendar, I know nobody cares if I do what's in my calendar. Right. So I can get away with it. But And if but you have multiple kids, if you have multiple kids, would they each need their own software since it's so tailored to the user? Right. Each one, every time someone puts on that armband, it tailors to their level of attention and challenges them on an individual level. Got and of it. Course, when you, if you're a parent and you're working with a couple of kids, your trainer, the person, your professional support agent, will train you how to work particularly with them, what programs they really need to do inside play attention, 
those games that they need to really focus on so that you can make significant improvements because obviously you may have a couple of kids but their needs are vastly totally different. Totally different. Holy totally cow. Different. Yes. So Peter, sure. we wrap up every show with a little game that we play called Truth or Dare. You may have heard of it before. Oh, well, I've heard of that. <laughs> have you heard of that? I've Tim Leary that. told him all about that one. I bet he did. <laughs> I hope you never took him up on it. So, I never did. No, well, so I want to ask you, would you prefer a truth or a dare? Uh, either one is fine with me. I'm up to any challenge that you Oh, have. look at He doesn't want to make dare, a decision. Dare, 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 dare. I'm going to let you choose. You've got to pick one or the other. I don't like right, to put it. I love truth. That's, I'm a truth, truth seeker, so let's okay. go ahead and talk about it. So, what music are you embarrassed to admit you listen to when you're alone? I'm alone. I listen on occasion to country music. Yeah! Yeah! Like, my, sister, <laughs> my sister sent me a link to an artist called Kristen Kelly, and uh, she sings a song called He Loves to Make Me Cry, and it actually is so romantic, oh. and it's not what you, it's oh. not what you think. So You've got to find I, I a song called people, your, uh, your Own, what is it called? Your Own Arrow, Follow Your Own Arrow, something like that? Follow Your Own, but you would love the song. I guarantee you'd love that song. Really? It loves to make you cry, Kristen Kelly. It's, it's Kristen actually Kelly. beautifully romantic. I've been listening to some Johnny Cash lately, so oh, I've, yeah. I've, I've kind Johnny of been Cash. in that little, but that's like old school country. I dig that. It's just the new one with the voices and the twang and the ooh. Oh, I can't take that myself, to be honest with you. Yeah. But if, have you listened to the Johnny Cash song with Bob Dylan? Girl, yes. I think it's from Girl from the Northwoods. Is that the... It's He's got a whole a, album of duets that he did with people that are I just I don't know, wonderful. but I will definitely look that one up oh, because I would love that. one's really that. cool. Oh, I gotta write YouTube. that down. Look, I'm writing it down. That's how Yay. important it is to me. <laughs> so oh, Peter Freer with Play Attention at playattention.com. Thank you so much for joining us today on Play DHD. Pleasure. Thanks, Peter. I hope we can meet again in the future. I hope so as well. Oh, we will. For more information on Play DHD, visit our website at playdhd.com. Or come play with us during recess at Facebook forward slash PlayDHD and on Twitter at hashtag PlayDHD. Oh, look, a squirrel!